सदाशिव सरंभां शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा सद्गुरचरणारविंदाभ्याम नम ब्रह्मसूत्र चाप्टर टू फोर्थ पाद फस्ट अधिकरण प्राणोत्पत्ति करण तथा प्राण गौण्य संभवात तत्श्रतेश्च तत्पूर्वक सप्तगतरण सप्तगते विशेषितवाच हस्तादयस्तुस्थि अत नैव प्राणाणुत्वादिकरण अणवश्च प्राणश्रेष्ठ्यादिकरण श्रेष्ठ the mukya prana is being characterized here shrestascha is the eighth sutra of the fourth pada second chapter 277th running brahma sutra this we are about half 555 sutras 277 and in this adhikaranam let us do the introduction general introduction to this adhikaranam In this adhikaranam, Vyasa Acharya comes to the mukya prana. In the previous three adhikaranams, we dealt with gauna prana, the sense organs, and now he comes to the main meaning of the prana, and that is why he has used the expression shreshta. And this can be called shreshta or mukya prana adhikaranam. and here also vyasa acharya deals with pranas origination utpatti the number sankhya and its nature whether visible or invisible those kinds of attributes and we have three stages here also namely the purva pakshi matam ekadeshi matam and siddhanta and the purva pakshi finds seeming contradiction in two shruti statements regarding the origination of mukya prana the life in general or the physiological system and one is from the mundaka upanishad quotation we have seen this earlier also which says that prana is born etasma jayate prana ha manaha sarvendriyani cha kham vayu jyoti rapa prithivi vishvasya dharini it is the second mundaka first section third mantra and another statement says prana existed even before creation along with brahman that is a mantra from rigveda this is called nasadhiya suktam na mrityuhu asit amrutam na tarhi na ratriya anna asit praketah anidavatam swadaya tadekam this is the actual statement that is going to be discussed today आनीदवातम स्वधयात देकम तस्माधान्यन परह किंचनास देयर इज वन सेंटेंस इन द सूक्तम एज आई टोल्ड आनीदवातम स्वधया तदेकम इन दिस स्टेटमेंट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड इज आनी ऑन दिस ब्रह्मा जी ब्रीथ आर एक्सहेल्ड आनी दी मींस टू ब्रीथ एंड फ्रॉम दिस रूट ओनली अपाना उदाना प्राण ऑल दोस प्राण दोस वर्ड्स के and ana means to breathe live which refers to inhalation exhalation and it means before creation nothing was there and only brahman was breathing before creation nothing was there only brahman was breathing one was brahman he was breathing and Brahm, brahman was alive and breathing okay and because of the breathing by brahman before creation it is concluded that prana was there before creation otherwise how he can breathe so swadhaya means mayaya therefore prana was also there pre- before creation so brahman maya and prana all three were there before creation and since prana already existed there is no question of prana taking birth where is the question of creation because prana already existed before creation along with brahman hence it is shruti viroda therefore there is no need to study brahma sutra is purva prakshi's contention then the ekadeshi he comes and he says that prana is eternal only because brahman has to be alive and it is clearly said that brahman was breathing before creation and therefore prana is nitya prana should have been there 
And what about the other Shruti Vakyam about Prana Utpatti, Visa, many of them? It is only secondary or Gauni Utpatti and do not take it seriously. It is only figurative, secondary Utpatti only. Visishta Advaitins and Dvaitins, they would say, do not take Tattva Masi seriously. For Advaitins, he wants only one statement, that is Tattva Masi. So the whole Bhagavad Gita is only an explanation of Tattva Masi. All Vedic interpreters, they, they face the problems and focusing differences. Lot of differences come and therefore they say, forget the Utpatti Vakyam, origination Vakyam of Prana. And Siddhanta says that you should take Utpatti Vakyam alone seriously. Now let us do the general analysis of this Sutra. Here Vyasacharya says, Mukya Pranaha Jayate. That is the essence of this Sutra. Now let us see the word analysis. Sreshtaha Cha, the primary prana also, the Mukya Prana also, Sreshtaha Cha, but we have to supply originates from Brahman. We have to supply these words, originates from Brahman. This is the word meaning. Now we will see the significance of the words. Shreshtaha means Mukya or primary prana, which is only one. There is only one Sreshta Prana, Mukya Prana. Just as Antakaranam is one with four different functions. We know Manas, Buddhi, Chitta, Ahankara, four different functions, but only one Antakaranam. So also Prana is only one, but there are five functions. Prana, Apana, Vyana, Udana, Samana. So Cha Jayate, Prana is also born like sense organs. This also means it also is born like the sense organs. And Vyasacharya does not give reason and does not also refute Egadesi or Purvapakshi himself. But Shankaracharya says, we have to take prana is born because majority of Shruti Vakyams, they talk of prana utpatti. Brahman breathe is a rare expression occurring somewhere. But generally, there are several Shruti Vakyas, they talk about origination of prana. Therefore, accept our view. That is Shankaracharya's contention. Eka vijnana na sarva vijnanam iti pratigya. That is a pratigya. So this is possible only if Brahman alone is eka karana. Brahman alone is the only cause and everything is karyam. Then only karana vijnana na karya vijnanam is possible. We have seen this all in great detail when we discuss these, these mantras. So prana will not be karyam of Brahman. If prana is not Brahma karyam, then Brahma vijnana na prana vijnanam na bhavati. So Upanishad tells in the beginning itself, eka vijnana na sarva vijnanam, that sarva includes prana also, and that is possible only if prana is born. And the third argument is, if prana is there in addition to Brahman, then there will be dvaitam. There will be two entities, prana and Brahma. Therefore, we have to take pranasya, utpatti alone. It cannot have coexisted along with Brahman. Then how to reconcile with the Rigveda mantra that Brahman, Brahman breathed even before the origination of the world? There, the word breathed means only it, is, it existed. Not breathe means it prana existed. A live person alone breathes. And therefore, it is an idiomatic expression to say Brahman existed and it does not mean Brahman was breathing prana. These are all things which can be very intriguing to us. Brahman existed does not mean Brahman was breathing prana. Ani means breathed prana. That alone is the objection from Purvapakshi. For this, the Siddhanti says, we do not twist, but you only ask the question with focus. You don't, don't just casually ask. Focus the question. The, what the statement says, anid, and there is another word also, avatam. Anid and avatam both are there. That is the most important word. And vatam means vayuhu or prana. So prana rahitam brahma anid. And therefore the verb anid should not be taken in conventional sense. And therefore brahman was without prana and prana was born later. So Brahman was, he existed without prana first and then prana was born later. This is clearly stated in another place also. 
Brahman does not have prana at all. In Mundaka Upanishad, in the second Mundaka, first section, second mantra, Divyohya Murta Purushaha, Sabahya Bhyantaro Hyajaha, Apranohi Amanaha, Shubrohi Aksharate Paratha Paraha. Brahman breathed without prana means what? Brahman existed without prana. And from that Brahman which existed before, prana was born later. So our conclusion is that prana abhijayate, it is also born. So this prana upasana is prescribed both in Chandogya Upanishad and Brihadarandika Upanishad. We have seen that. And Jeshtasya Shreshtasya Upasana is prescribed in both Brihadarandika and Chandogya also. And with this, this Shreshta Prana Adhikaranam is also over. Now, let us go to the fifth Adhikaranam. Vayukriya Adhikarana. Now, Vayukriya Pridak Upadeshat. That is the Sutra. Na Vayu Kriye Prithak Upadeshat, 9th Sutra, 4th section, 2nd chapter, 278th running Brahma Sutra. So the nature of the Mukya Prana is discussed in this Sutra. And first let us do a general introduction to this Adhikaranam with four Sutras. Previously, while discussing Prana, which was called Indriyam or Karanam, we mentioned that there are 11 Karanams in number. And what are those? Five Jnanendriyas, five Karmendriyas, and one Antakkarana. And in these 11 Karanams, we did not include Prana at all. From this we come to know that Prana doesn't come under Karanams. Thus Prana doesn't come under Karta also. As Karta is defined as Chetanaha, sentient, and Svatantaraha, independent one. Prana cannot come under karta because it is neither independent nor chetanam. Prana does not come under instrument of transaction, nor it comes under the subject or karta that uses the indriyams. So prana is not an object or part of the world also. It is not the field of interaction, nor it is the objective world also because prana is where? It is in the body. So it does not come under the triputi. What is the Triputi? Subject, object and instrument. For transactions, most factors required are Karta, Karanam and Karma. These are the most important factors required for any transaction. Karta, Karanam, instrument and Karma. Now the question is, Karma here refers to object, objective work. Now the question is, whether should we accept Prana as separate principle at all? Since it does not play any prominent role as karta or karanam or karma. Should we have to give, call it a separate principle at all? Because it doesn't take any other prominent roles. Should we accept prana as a separate principle? Is prana independent category or you have to club it as one of the prominent factors as karta, karma, karana? Should, should we accept prana tattvam as a separate category? So these are the questions. And some people want to include prana in some other tattvam without giving independent status. But we want to point out that it is a separate tattvam. We mean Siddhanti. We want to point out that prana is a separate tattvam. Should Mukya prana an independent category status or not? That is the question. And other systems of philosophy, what do they say? Independent status should not be given to prana. And we want to say, Siddhantin wants to say, prana has independent status. So this is the contradiction and the argument. So this is the essence of this Adhikaranam consisting of four sutras. And since this Adhikaranam comes under Avirodha Adhyaya, the second Adhyaya, Avirodha Adhyaya, we have to present the three stages as usual, Purva Pakshi, Ekadeshi and Siddhanti. In the Purva Pakshi, he quotes two distinct Shruti Vakyams that are seemingly contradictory. One Vakyam says, Prana is not a separate Tattvam at all. Do not count it. And another one says, indirectly, it says Prana is a separate Tattvam. Both are there in Shruti. Therefore, Shruti is a Pramanam, is the argument of Purva Pakshi as always. And what are the two Vakyas he has in mind? One Shruti Vakyam is from Aitareya Aranyaka. Not one of the ten Upanishads. It is Aitareya Aranyaka. It is outside of it. Aitareya Upanishad. 
comes at the end portion of Aitareya Aranyaka. Generally, the order of the Veda is what? I'm just only refreshing. Samhita portion first, then Brahmana portion, Aranyaka portion, followed by the Upanishad portion. And Samhita portion talks about the hymns glorifying various devatas and all. And Brahmana portion mostly concentrates on the ritual portion, Karmakanda. Aranyaka portion, Upasana, Upasana Kanda portion. And Upanishad is a Jnana portion, Jnana Kanda. For example, Taitriya Samhita, Taitriya Brahmanam, Taitriya Aranyakam, Taitriya Upanishad. Similarly, Aitriya Brahmanam, Aitriya Aranyakam, Aitriya Upanishad. And we saw Aitriya Upanishad as part of our Dasho Upanishad lectures long ago. They are all there on the website if anybody wants to see that. So this is the difference. And it is Aitriya Aranyakam in the second chapter, 33rd mantra. The mantra says, Yaha Pranaha Saha Vayuhu. This is the mantra. Yaha Pranaha Saha Vayuhu. Prana can be included in Vayu Tattvam, which is one of the five elements. And since we have separately enumerated Pancha Bhutani, Akasha Vayu Agni Apaha Prithivi, because Vayu is included in that, Prana need not be separately mentioned. That is the argument. Outside Vayu is called Vayu, and inside Vayu is called outside means outside of the person. Inside means inside the person. Inside Vayu is called the Prana. Outside Vayu is called the element Vayu. <coughs> and enclosed Vayu is Pranaha enclosed in the body, in the Shariram. Therefore, prana need not be separately counted at all. Who says? The Aranyaka itself says. <laughs> I think we don't have to go to either Ekadeshi or Purupakshi. The Aranyaka itself says, Yaha pranaha sahavayuho. And in this approach, prana is included as karma category, the objective universe. Objective universe refers to karma category here. It is not either prarabdha karma, sanjaya karma, any of those. This refers to the objective universe. So vayu is an objective universe. That is the prana. Therefore, do not count it separately. This is one shruti. And the other shruti he quotes is the well-known Mundaka Upanishad. Etasma jayate pranaha, the second Mundaka, first section, third mantra. This we have seen many times. Here, prana seems to be taken as a separate tattvam, separate principle, separate category. How? What the mantra says? Etasma jayate pranaha, manasarvendriyanicham, khamva yurjyotira paprithivi vishvasya dharini. So, in the second line, after kham, akasha, kham means akasha. After akasha, next is given vayu. Kham vayuhu jyotihi apaka prithivi. So in the first line, prana utpatti is mentioned, yetasma jayate pranaha. Prana utpatti is mentioned in the first line and in the second line, vayu utpatti is mentioned. And since both of them are separately enumerated in this law, in this mantra, they must be of separate category. Otherwise, Upanishad doesn't have to say them like this, as two distinct things. Therefore, prana is what? Tattvantaram. That seems to be the Mundaka Upanishad approach. So these two three Shrutis are contradictory. Therefore, the Purupakshi's conclusion is Shruti is a Pramanam. Do not study Shruti Vedas. Now we will go to the Ekadeshi Mata, who is Sankhya philosopher here. And he says, there is no contradiction in the Shruti. And you have to accept Prana is Tattvantaram based on the Mundaka Upanishad statement. And he says, Yaha pranaha saha vayuhu used to be interpreted differently. Now, what is Sankhya's philosophy's concept of prana? There only he is going to differ from Siddhanti in his concept. He says prana is a separate tattvam, all right, but it is nothing but the name of the total function of the ekadasha karanani. It all look confusing. Please, one has to be closely with me. Prana is a separate tattvam, it's okay. But it is nothing but the name of the total function of the 11 karanas, five jnana indriyas, five karma indriyas, and, and the karana. So it refers not to the ekadasa karanas directly, but the ekadasa karanas have got a, a karana vyaparaha, karana vrittihi, karana pravrittihi, a function. The vyapara or function, that is called prana. So not the sense organs themselves, 
but their function their vyapara is called prana that is why while dealing with sankhya shrishti at that time we said we did it elaborately at that time when we talked about sankhya shrishti if you remember we talked about prakriti from prakriti to mahat tattva prakriti prakriti or pradhanam in sankhya language prakriti is called pradhanam so from pradhanam to mahat tattvam mahat to ahankara ahankara it branches into three namely manaha dasha indriyani actually in the dasha indriyani in the 10 indriyas prana was not said and pancha sukshma bhutas so all these were included as three branches from ahankara and from the sukshma bhutas we put the last branch pancha sthula bhutani <clears throat> this is how it was and totally chatur vimshati 24 tattvas were there <clears throat> we already enumerated all of them we even put some kind of i don't know whether i put a chart but it, it we put it the way how how this thing evolves and prana is not separately mentioned out there it is taken as the vyapara or function of the 11 indriyas and since the function is different from the substance it can be taken as a separate tattvam semi tattvam is his justification therefore ekadeshi says it is tattvantara in what form ekadasha karananam vyapara rupena tattvantara as the function of the 11 organs not the organs themselves so in sankhya srishti even though in the 24 tattvas prana is not included here he says that prana should be taken as separate tattvam in the sense it is vyapara of the karanas కరణ వ్యాపార రూప పృథక్ తత్వ తత్వత్వేన ఇట్ షుడ్ బి టేకన్ ఇట్ షుడ్ బి అక్సెప్టెడ్ ఇస్ ది ఏకదేశి మదం హియర్ ఏకదేశి ఇస్ సాంఖ్య నౌ లెట్ అస్ ఆస్ ద క్వశ్చన్ టు సాంఖ్య ఇఫ్ యు టేక్ ప్రాణ అస్ అ సెపరేట్ తత్వం హౌ విల్ యు అకౌంట్ ఫార్ ది ఐత్రేయ ఆరణ్యక శృతి వేర్ ఇట్ సెడ్ యో వై ప్రాణ సహ వాయు ప్రాణ ఇస్ వాయు ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఇట్ సేస్ and for the sankhya philosopher answers their vayu should not be taken as a regular vayu tattvam but it is represented as this called chalanatmakam karma the chalanatmaka tattvam the very word vayu is derived from the root va vati constantly it is in motion iti vayu therefore yo vai pranaha saha vayu means pranaha prana vyapara rupaham karma rupaham pravritti rupaha and it is a pravritti of what ekadasha karanana pravritti hi eva the pravritti the function of the 11 karanas this is ekadeshi mata and siddhanti now would say prana is neither vayu it should not come under the vayu tattvam and it should not come under indriya vapara also function of the indriya sense organ also but it should be taken as a separate principle other than vayu and indriya kriya not indriyas indriya kriya neither vayu nor indriya kriya it is a separate tattvam that is siddhanti's contention he has to prove it and this is the essence of the sadhikaram now let us do the general analysis of this sutra the introduction tells the actual context of this particular sutra this adhikaranam here it is a very clear it's very clear in this sutra na vayu kriye here vyasacharya says that prana is neither vayu tattvam that vayu tattvam part of karma nor it is vyapara ha the kriya activity a part of karma karana so not of karma it's not karma karana so it is neither so it, it is neither so it is neither part of karma nor part of karma karma refers to as i told you object universe so it is a separate tattvam so why do we consider it as a separate tattvam because it is separately enumerated in the mundaka shruti this is the general analysis now let us go to the word analysis the running meaning is there are three words here na vayu kriye prithak upadeshat these are the three words prithak upadeshat is a compound vayu kriye and also na vayu kriye means the is the primary prana or the mukhya prana primary prana or mukhya prana secondary prana as the figurative one is neither vayu nor the function of sense organs so vayu or function of sense organs na it is not neither of them prithak upadesha because it has been mentioned separately in the in the, the shruti 
Now let us come to the significance of the words. Na means not. And what is not? We have to supply mukya prana. Primary prana is not. Okay, primary prana is not means what not? Vayu kriye. The vayu tattvam. Primary prana is not vayu tattvam. One of the five elements. Na is it kriye. The function of the sense organs. Vayu tattvam. Vayu kriye is two, two things. Vayu and kriye. So vayu tattvam is one of the five elements. It is not vayu tattvam. It is not kriye. The function of the sense organs also. So kriya means karana or indriya vyaparaha. The function. So vayu kriya is actually here dvandu samasa. Vayu cha kriya cha. So vayu kriya means it is akaranda sri lingha prathama judi vajanam. So anyway, I don't want to go into <laughs> grammar. Saptami. So then what is the reason? Prithak. Prithak means distinctly, separately. It is not a saptami bhakti here. So it is the prathama judi vajanam and um, uh, Akar and the Sri Lanka. It's a Dwandu Samasa. So Prithak. So both Kriya and also in the um, Avayu and Kriya. Part. So Prithak means distinctly, separately. And Upadeshaha, it refers to the Vedic statement that comes, that occurs in the Vedic statement, that Upanishad. Therefore, Prithak Upadesha means distinct Vedic statement is there, which is the Mundaka Shruti, second Mundaka, first section, third mantra that we read. Pranaha Jayate, Tasma Jayate, Pranaha. The distinct between being pranaha jayate, vayu jayate. It's born. Since prana is distinctly said, we have to accept it as a separate tattva. Then Shankaracharya makes it clear. If prana tattva is vayu itself, prana need not be mentioned separately. We mentioned this earlier also. Suppose it is the Sankhya approach. That is, if prana is the function of the sense organs, then Shankaracharya argues, if prana is function of sense organs, once Upanishad talks about origination of sense organs, it need not talk of origination of function of sense organs. Hope you are with me. If prana is a function of sense organs, once Upanishad talks about origin of sense organs, it need not talk about origination of function of sense organs. To clarify, in that Yetasma Jayate Pranaha, the second quarter says, Manaha Sarva Indriyani Cha. Sense organs are born out of Brahman, Manas, the Indriyas and all that. And then Pranaha is said in the first quarter of the same mantra. So Shankaracharya says, you say Prana is the function of sense organs. And if the Shruti talks about the origination of the sense organs, it need not talk about the function of the sense organs separately. When you talk about sense organs, function is included in them. You don't have to say that, for example, our teacher has come with speaking power. <laughs> Otherwise, I cannot teach. For example, when you say someone comes, whatever function belongs to him or her, the function is not separately existent. Utpatti of Indriyam is Utpatti of Indriya Vyaparaha. If Prana is Indriya Vyapara, it is Utpatti. It's Utpatti need not be separately mentioned. But since Prana Utpatti is separately mentioned, it is not Indriya Vyapara. It's a function of Indriyas. So, Yedi Pranaha, Indriya Vyapara Rupaha Bhavati, Tarhim, Indriya Utpatehe, Pratakim, Prana Utpatihi, Na Vakta Vyabhavati. You don't have to say separately the function of the organ. This is argument one. And there is another argument also. If Prana is the function of sense organs, then what happens? During Sushipti, what will happen? All the organs they resolve. Jnana Indriyas, the Karma Indriyas, mind the emotions, memory, discriminative faculty, even ahankara, nothing functions in Sushupti. Thus all the ekadasha karanams, they are all resolved in sleep. And if kar karana vyapara is prana, what will happen? During sleep, when the karanam resolves, pranam will also resolve, it will go out. That means what? Sleep will be equal to maranam, when prana goes out. But we find even when all the karanams resolve, thank God, prana agnaya evam etaspin pure jagrati. So prana agnaya evam, only the prana agnaya alone is there in this body. In Prashnopanishad, it was said that prana agni jagrati, it functions when everything is resolved. And therefore, prana must be a separate function only, which is awake during Sushupti when the karanas are all dissolved. And then the third argument Shankaracharya gives is based on the Sankhya special theory of prana. 
and sankhya he defines prana as sensory function or activity and what type of sensory function he says all the sense organs that is the ekadasha karanani the 11 sense organs they have got two fold functions just is an aside point not very much required though but so sense organs have two fold functions one is an independent function of each organ and the other is the cumulative function of all the organs together so one is a vyashti function vyashti vyaparah and another one is samashti vyaparah for example many people are let us say doing road work to lay a road or whatever and each has got distinct function each worker suppose on the road some car stops in the middle of the road then all the people all the five workers let us say they drop their individual functions and come to push the car out now pushing of the car is not done by one person one person cannot function maybe a car is heavy he cannot push and when all the five cumulatively to do the work then only the car will move not only all of them should push there is also another condition they all must function in an unidirectional function they have to all push the car in one direction only so we have got now two fold activities one is vyashti activity another is samashti activity samashti is unidirectional vyashti is multidirectional and in sankhya's example what happens he gives panjara chalana kriya that is what he gives this panjara means a net imagine there are many birds they are stuck in a net or a light cage whatever you can think of panjara and each bird has got a separate function one one bird may be eating one may be doing some other job all kinds of things imagine and all the birds together decided to carry the net and fly there is a story also like that in panchatantra and all that so one bird cannot do that but if all the birds cumulatively function to carry the net and fly that function is called panjara chalana kriya and it is a function of not a single bird but it is the cumulative function of all the birds unidirectional similarly we can't be assume ekadasha karanani all the 11 karanas they have got independent function each one but all the karanams have got a cumulative function also and what is that cumulative function sustaining the body sharira dharana kriya not seeing hearing the independent functions this is the total shariram all seeing hearing and all that thing is independent functions so if this is said then we do not have to accept a separate prana tattva prana is what is the cumulative function of ekadasha indriyani it is the for the cumulative function of all the 11 indriyas this is sankhya approach for this shankaracharya he answers first of all if the cumulative activity of the karanams has to be taken as prana tattvam then there must be some pramana to prove the separate unidirectional function of the karanams there should be some pramana should be there you cannot just assume in the case of man pushing the car i have got a pratyaksha pramana to see that they are doing a common function also in the case of the birds we can see their cumulative unidirectional function but how can you show the gnani indriyas having unidirectional function and we have no pramanam to show this unidirectional function at all therefore the main argument is what pramana abhavat there is no praman then there is another argument also in fact this is more important if you take prana as the common function of all the karanams the karanams become the substance and function becomes an attribute or adjective a dharma because the activity rests in the substance activity comes and goes like for example a car coming or i am speaking speaking is an activity which arises in me and resolves in me whereas i the actor or the subject continuously i exist but the function comes and goes therefore what are substance and property function is a property and organ or karanam is a substance therefore if prana means function of karanams who depends on what is our question function depends upon substance or substance depends upon function 
for example speech depends on me or i don't depend on speech actually right now we have to understand the argument carefully here if prana is only a function of the karanam prana becomes an attribute depending on the karan if prana is only a function of the karanam prana becomes an attribute depending on the karanam therefore who is dependent on whom now prana depends upon the karanam according to sankhya philosophy we should not lose track of it these are all sankhya arguments therefore which will be mukhyam and which will be gaunam is in our it's our question is to sankhya which is mukhyam and which is gaunam every indriya will become mukhya prana and this prana will become gauna prana this mukhya other prana will become gauna prana because according to sankhya this prana is only an activity of the substance called the karana he defines prana as only the activity of the karanams not the karana itself i told you in the beginning not the karana itself but the function of the karana karana vyapara only therefore who will be shreshtah the karanams will become shreshtah and shankaracharya argues on the other hand we find in the upanishads the story of each sense organ prashna upanishad we already saw the story earlier all the senses are each one of them decided to go out for one year without any significant effect for example the eyes go out this person survives as a blind person nothing went everything is fine he years go out he behaves like a deaf person he as a deaf person dumb person nothing happens to him he is still alive and kicking when he is a deaf person he was even happier because he didn't listen to anybody scolding him whereas when prana is about to go out all the sense organs are all pulled along and all sense organs what did they do ultimately they did namaskaram to prana because originally their quarrel was what to find out who is superior and all sense organs realized without prana none of them can function so they are, there is a prana stuti also in prashna upanishad and from this what is clear sense organs depend upon prana and prana is not depend upon sense or prana does not depend upon sense organs whereas in the sankhya philosophy what will happen prana being only an activity of the sense organs prana will depend upon sense organs for its very existence therefore according to sankhya philosophy sense organs are mukhya and prana becomes amukhya whereas veda says prana is mukhya and sense organs are amukhya therefore sankhya theory is incorrect therefore na vayu kriye prithak upadesha that is the sutra now let us go to the next sutra chakshuradivattu tat sahasishtya divyaha chakshuradivattu tat saham shishtya divyaha shishtya divyaha 10th sutra 4th pada second chapter 279th running brahma sutra the characteristics of prana is continued here first let us do the general analysis of this sutra so in the previous sutra we established that prana is not vayu one of the five elements prana is not also the ekadasha karanam one of the 11 sense organs we also said that it is not karana vyapara function of a sense organ also not function of any karanas it is not element five elements panja bhutas it is not karanam it is it is karana karana function and at the same time we gave a separate tattvam status to that also so now a doubt may come if it is not an external world world of object that is karma karma refers to external world of object i mentioned earlier it is if it is not karanam also it is not karana vyapara also function also but if it is a separate tattvam also but if it is a separate tattvam also then if it is neither karana nor karma and a separate tattvam by parisesha nyayena in the triputi only principle what only principle will remain only karta will remain parisesha nyayena because you negate all other things only this is the only thing that will remain then prana must be karta then one may have a doubt how prana can be a karta for this vyasa acharya makes it very clear that it does not come under karta also why it is not karta it is not karta because karta is what 
స్వతంత్ర చేతన వస్తు ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇండిపెండెంట్ స్వతంత్ర విత్ విల్ అండ్ సెన్షియంట్ ఆల్సో చేతన చేతన వస్తు ఇట్ ఈస్ సో ప్రాణ ఈస్ నెయిదర్ స్వతంత్ర ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఇండిపెండెంట్ దట్ ఈస్ వై ఇన్ సుషుప్తి ప్రాణ ఈస్ దేర్ బట్ ఇట్ డస్ ఇన్ హ్యావ్ ఫ్రీ విల్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఎస్ నాట్ అస్ చేతన తత్వం ఆల్సో సెన్షియన్ ప్రిన్సిపుల్ ఆల్సో ప్రాణ ఈస్ అచేతన తత్వం ఓన్లీ and therefore it does not come under karta karta should be a sentient person so if prana ver karta it would have a will power of its own because a karta will have its will power of its own of his own in the sutra in this sutra vyasacharya will say it is paratantra does not have a will of its own that means for all practical purposes it is like a karana like the word karana eva It's like a karana, but it is not a karana. Like a karana means it is not svatantraha, like kartha. But it is not karanam also because we have not included in the 11 karanams in the list that we enumerated earlier. So it is not a kartha with free will also. This, that means it's a peculiar principle this prana should be. Then the fundamental doubt is what? Why prana at all? Why should you worry about this prana at all? we don't have to have it then it is vyartham prana tattvam is a vyartha tattvam and vyasacharya says do not say it is vyartham we are all having the classes because of prana therefore prana enjoys a unique status other than karta karma karanam which vyasacharya is going to establish so it has a peculiar unique status it is not karta it is not karma it is not karana and as we said the main purpose of this vayu kriya adhikaranam is mukya prana sankhya the number of pranas that is the that is the discussion here in this particular adhikaranam and the answer will be given actually in sutra number 12 only the actually we will give it right now the, the answer is mukya prana is only one but we can count it as five prana apana vyana udana samana they are only five different functions of the same prana while mukya prana is only one like the antakarna is only one but it has four functions mind buddhi chitta ahankara now let us discuss what exactly is the mukya prana mukya prana means what the final final conclusion of this discussion we will see first so that at least we know where we are going vyasacharya not only will give our definition of mukya prana incidentally he also negates the suggestions given by other systems also he not only gives the definition of mukya prana he also negates other systems and each system of philosophy has its own approach towards prana even though prana is common to all prana is the tattvam is common to every one but the definition of prana is not common to all different systems have different opinions about prana then what is vedantic opinion of prana what is siddhantin's view prana is the life supporting system whose function is maintenance of infrastructure of the whole body which is the office premises if you want to the whole body you can call it as office premises and then the prana's function is maintenance of this office premises and all instruments of transactions maintenance of all of them maintaining infrastructure consists of two things one is the maintenance of the physical body as well as the 11 instruments of transactions the gauna pranas the various sense organs that is the function of mukya prana mukya prana's function is this maintenance of the physical body and the 11 instruments of transactions go on a pranas so these instruments of transaction they are available in which office in the physical body office and this maintenance of infrastructure should continue from when right from conception up to the death of the individual 24 hours a day 7 day a week 30 days a month 365 days a year as long as the person lives so the maintenance system should should function without fail 
Failure means what? Death. So only when the infrastructure is maintained by the Mukhya Prana, all the transactions can take place. And all transactions involve what? The Triputi. Triputi, the transacting Kartha, the transacting Ekadasha Karanams, the 11 Karanams, are the Gauna Pranas, and the transaction objects of the world. They are all involved. And this is possible only when Mukya Prana maintains this infrastructure. And these transactions are many and varied also. Because Ekadasha Karanams are there, hearing, smelling, writing, all that thing speaking, they are all transactions. Therefore, transactions are many and varied. And not only that, there is also a temporary resolution of transactions. When? In Sushupti Avastha. And the, the sleep state. And when the transactions are resolved, there is a temporary resolution of the Triputi also. Transacting Karta, transacting Gauna Pranas, and transaction objective world, they are all temporarily resolved. And even when the transactions, the Triputi is resolved, the maintenance of the infrastructure, which is the job of Mukya Prana, that should continue. Even when the Gauna Pranas are all resolved, they are all taking rest in Sushupti, but Prana cannot take rest, it should maintain. Maintenance function is different from transaction. Maintenance function is not one of the transactions. Very important to understand. Maintenance function is different from transaction. Maintenance function is not one of the transactions because transactions can resolve. Transacting Triputi can resolve, but maintenance function will have to continue. If not, what will happen? During sleep, when the transactions and the Triputi, when they resolve, suppose the maintenance function also resolves, what will happen? The other people's transactions will begin. What will they do? All the people around, they will get busy to call the priest to do the final rites, cremating him. He will be dead. Therefore, the main thing we have to notice, Gauna Prana is associated with the transactions and Mukya Prana is associated with maintenance of the infrastructure, namely the physical body and the sense organs. Using the infrastructure and maintaining the infrastructure are different. Karta uses the Karana and prana maintains the karma. Karta uses the karanam and prana maintains the karma. Karta contacts the world and it is called karma. Prana does not contact the world. Therefore, prana also has got connection with karanam and karta also has got connection with karanam. And the difference between them is what? Karta uses the karanam and through karanam contacts the world, which is called karma. Whereas prana does not use the karanam, prana only maintains the karanam. Therefore, Vyasacharya wants to establish what? Prana is different from Triputi, karta, karanam, karma. And therefore, prana does not transact at all. Still, because of prana alone, all transactions are possible. And we prove that prana is different from triputi and different from triputi transactions also. And we prove that in Sushupti, in deep sleep, prana does not resolve, although triputi and triputi transactions, they all resolve. Thank God prana does not resolve. This is the Vedantic approach. Whereas the other systems of philosophy, they commit mistakes. What kind of mistakes they commit? Some of them he refers to actually in the Vashya. One mistake is when they take prana as vayu, then vayu becomes one of the triputi. It becomes part of the objective world, karma. Part of the objective means karma. Because to transaction karma and all. I already mentioned. So karma is not agami karma or prarabdha karma. Karma refers to the objective, object, objective part of the world. So the Sankhya philosophers, they commit another mistake also. Namely, they say Mukya Prana is nothing but the transactions done by the Gauna Prana. What Sankhya philosopher says, Mukya Prana is nothing but the transactions done by the Gauna Prana. They are not Gauna Prana itself. They are 
transactions done by the gavana prana it is not gavana prana itself but it is the vyaparaha the activity done by the gavana prana the 11 karnas and vyasa acharya says that mukya prana is neither gavana gavana prana nor is it the transaction of gavana prana that is why the name of this adhikaranam is na vayu kriye mukya prana is not the activity of the gavana prana and the final mistake possible is mukya prana can be taken as karta that's what we said because parsation nyaya and that's what we said at the time and vyasacharya says maintaining a company or a corporation is different from transacting a company transacting company may stop transactions but the maintaining company will continue the maintenance transacting company they can they can close the business but maintaining company has to maintain that that building or wherever it is so the karta the jeevaha will suspend the transaction in sushupti and even when karta jeevaha suspends the transaction the triputi the transactions they are all gone but prana continues to maintain the infrastructure of the 11 gavana pranas although they have suspended the transactions in sushupti here we are told that the story in the prashna upanishad we have mentioned it earlier also earlier also that is proved how the sense organs are dependent on prana so prana agniya eva etasmin pure jagrati i already mentioned this earlier so the jiva suspends all transactions na pashyati na shrunoti na ramate all those things they are all there in the mantra so we have seen that thing at that time in prashna upanishad where all the 11 gavana pranas are the soul five gnana indriyas five karma indriyas four antakaranani the emotional mind is gone rational thinking is gone maybe it is gone even way away memory is gone ahankara is gone aham 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 is gone so all four functions are resolved all and karta the jiva is resolved then mukya prana alone continues not transaction but what etat bhanam avashtabhyam jidharayami etat shariram avashtatya jidharaya jidharaya so when the maintaining function of prana is about to stop the sense organs began to weaken and they realized and started chanting praise of prana without which they cannot function in the prashna upanishad story therefore mukya prana is a unique system life supporting system we are all alive because of the inbuilt life saving system in the form of prana provided by the lord himself in the ninth sutra vyasacharya has established that the mukya prana is neither the object of transaction nor the vyapara nor instrument nor function of the instrument therefore karma is rejected karanam is rejected then karana vyapara is rejected what is left out karta alone is left out therefore in the 10th sutra vyasa says says the mukya prana is not the karta jeeva also because karta resolves during sleep karta with free will resolves in sleep while mukya prana does not resolve karta with the free will resolves and if free will belongs to mukya prana what will happen in sleep also since mukya prana is there we will have free will in sleep also so if you are going to reject free will in jagrat <laughs> if somebody wants to do free will reject free will in jagrat okay we have nothing to say to them because free will is given to you to help in life but if people want to reject free will in jagrat avastha itself we have nothing to say in our tradition actually it's a aside topic it is said that rejecting free will is a papam because free will is a gift of god to help us deal with situations in plan for situations and all so it is said rejecting the free will is a papam in our script in our in our tradition there is a book called actually yoga vasishta which has several chapters dedicated to establish that free will is there and you have to accept and it also says it is maha papam to reject free will assuming that we are all vaidika people there is free will in jagrat avastha in sushupti we don't have free will that means what the free willed karta is there in jagrat avastha and that karta is resolved in sushupti avastha 
And who is maintaining the body? Not the Karta with free will, but the Mukya Prana. The Mukya Prana only maintains the body, which is not the locus of free will also. The Prana is not the locus of free will. That alone keeps the body alive. Actually, this Swamiji makes this argument, but Vyasacharya gives a Sastra-based argument in this Sutra to establish Mukya Prana is not the Karta Jeevaha. Mukya Prana is not the Karta Jeevaha. He says here that whenever Mukya Prana is enumerated in the Shastra, it is called enumeration argument. In Shastra, there are various arguments. It is listed along with the other 11 instruments called Gauna Prana. So whenever Mukya Prana is enumerated in the Shastra, it is listed along with the other 11 instruments called Gauna Prana. So Gauna Prana is instruments and instruments are not Karta. And therefore, since Mukya Prana goes along with Karanam, Vyasacharya says Mukya Prana is also similar to Karanam. Because it also goes with Karanam, it is also similar to Karanam. How? In being different from Karta. Because both of them are different from the Karta. Gauna Prana is also different from Karta. And Mukya Prana is also different from Karta. So because of that difference, in the being different from Karta, both are similar. So Karana Ehi Saha Paditat Patem Karana Samanaha Natu Karana Mitsal. It is not a Karta, is our conclusion. So Karanas have got transacting function. And Mukya Prana also has, it has got the maintenance function, but both are different from Karta. This is the argument of this Sutra. And then the word analysis, maybe I will, I will postpone it for next, uh, next week. For the word analysis of this Sutra. Yo Veda Dosvara Prokko Vedante Chapratishtitaham Tasya Pratilina Saya Parasamahe Shwaraham Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chetem Purnasya Purna Madaya Purna Meva Vasishate Om Shanti 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 Shri Guru Bhyana Maha Hari Hivom Sri Krishna Kamastamaraya